It is such a privilege being with you, and it's such a privilege joining those of you that are watching us online. We have a story today uh, for one of our people that we can relate to that's just like us, that's from the Old Testament. And just before I read our scripture for us this morning, boys and girls, I do have a story. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the 60-year-old couple who had gone through life. They never did have everything that they could have, but they made it through life successful, and they got by. And so, God decided that He would send an angel down and would actually give them two wishes that they never had before. And so, He brought the couple down man and a woman, and the angel said to the woman, uh, what would you like? Something that you've never had before. And she says, I would love to travel the world. And the angel said, poof, and there was two tickets to go all around the world. And he looked at the man and he says, well, what would you like? And he kind of held his head in shame a little bit. And he says, actually, I want something I'm a little bit ashamed of. He said, no, go ahead, spit it out. And he says, I would like a wife who's 30 years younger than I am. And the angel said, poof, and he was 90 years old. So our passage of Scripture today comes from an Old Testament passage that is not that familiar, maybe to everyone, probably familiar to most of you, but for the sake of those who may be here that have never read the passage, and for those of you that may viewing, be, be viewing online, I'm going to read uh, the passage for us, and then we will go into the Word. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, it says that David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's house named Ziba. And they summoned him to appear before David. And the king said unto him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? And Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Well, where is he? The king asked. And Ziba answered, He is at the house of Micar, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. And so the king had him brought from Lodabar, from the house of Micar, the son of Amiel. And when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. And Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that I should notice, that you should notice a dead dog like me? And then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward. And said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him. Bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, the grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. And then Ziba said to the king, Your servant will do whatsoever my lord the king commands his servants to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, 
and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. He was lame in both feet. I want you to know that what we have in this story is an, a, a clear illustration of the great and masterful favor that God always has toward us. I want you to know that no matter where you find yourself at today, in the midst of whatever it is that you may be facing today, the biggest thought and the biggest idea to always keep on your mind is that God has kindness towards you. The kindness of God is one of the kind of underthought of things that we have because we get so caught up into the circumstances and the situations that we're facing that sometimes the very last thought that we have is that the God that sits in the heavens has kindness toward each one of us. There is a calling on each one of our lives, and it is a calling of kindness and love. God has favor. There is favor toward each one of his children. No matter what situation his children find themselves in, God always has favor, and that favor is always demonstrated by his kindness. If you woke up this morning and say, yeah, God's kindness. And sometimes God's kindness is something that is severely overlooked in our lives. And in this story, David, after he has settled everything in the kingdom and things are going well, he says to his servant, is there anybody left from the house of Saul that I can show kindness? And they said, well, there is one. His name is Mephibosheth. He's Saul's grandson. He's Jonathan's son. Saul, David, and Jonathan were in a covenant. And when you're in a covenant relationship, you make a commitment that not only will you be in covenant with the well-being of that person that you're in covenant with, but you will also be in a covenant relationship with their children. I want you to know that God has a covenant with you. And not only is that covenant with his son, Jesus Christ, but his covenant is also with you. He says, is there anybody left that I can show kindness? So God has favor, and most of that favor is unknown favor. He says, yes, there is someone. His name is Mephibosheth. Now let me tell you a little bit about Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was the grandson of Saul. He was the son of Jonathan. And conflict broke out. Uh, and when that conflict broke out, his nurse, she tried to get him to help him escape because he is a potential heir to the throne. So it's a good chance that his head could easily be chopped off. So she tried to save his life. And as she was running with him, she dropped him. Sometimes when someone's trying to help you, they can drop you. She thought, see, sometimes your blessing and your dropping 
can actually happen in the same situation. Sometimes someone was doing the best that they knew how to do, and they were trying to get out of a severe situation, a crisis situation, a traumatic situation, and in the process of them going through the trauma and the crisis and the horrible situation, you accidentally got dropped. Shout amen. You know I'm telling the truth. Now, there are things that happen because we do them. But most of the stuff that happens to most of us is us reacting to the things that were done to us before we even knew they were done to us. She dropped him when he was five years old. He didn't even know anything about this king business. He didn't know about the affairs of his grandfather. He didn't know about the affairs of his father. Sometimes the stuff that we're struggling with the most that's keeping us from seeing the kindness of God is something that happened to us before we were aware of it. And this dropping that happened to him caused him to be lame. He was broken. Brokenness can come from being dropped. And when you get dropped and you end up broken, you head down the loader bar. Now, let me tell you about loader bar. Loader bar was a place, it's, it's called in scripture the place of no pasture. You heard of the other side of the tracks? You know what loader bar is? It's two towns past the other side of the track. In other words, it was low. <laughs> you can end up living so much lower than what your calling is on your life because you've ended up in a place where everything is low. Amen. See, everything is low. And so he ended up going down there, and now when you're in lower bar, you're in survival mode. You just got to figure out how to survive in lower bar. So he ended up going down there, and he lived for 15 years in lower bar. He had to be like the people in lower bar. He had to talk like the people in lower bar. He had to think like the people in lower bar. He had to act like the people in lower bar just to get along. I want you to know that God has a calling on your life. You're a child of the king and you might be in lower bar, but you're not of lower bar. Sometime you got to get in your car and just take a ride on the outside of Loda Bar. So he's down there and he's living in Loda Bar. And while he's down there living in Loda Bar, all of a sudden he gets word that the king has sent for him. Let me say something to you. Sometimes when God is sending for you, Sometime when the king is sending for you, it looks like the worst day ever. It's kind of like, can we just go straight to the rapture right now? <laughs> Sometime your blessing looks like a curse. Sometimes the way 
that God is intending to transition you and move you forward looks like the worst thing that could ever happen. And I'm sure, see, in those days, you know, news traveled, you know, and people went ahead by the way the king's caravan is on. And in those days, if you were the heir of a previous king and the present king sent for you, it was a suddenly death sentence. And so here he is now. They're coming to get him. And he thinks, it's over. It is over. But I want you to know it's never over. Listen, somebody's listening to me right now, and you think it's over. You might think it's over with your marriage. You might think it's over with your job. You might think it's over with a circumstance and a situation. But I want you to know that God has kindness towards you. God has favor towards you. And God might be trying to get you out of that situation. And so they come and they get him. I'm doing a lot of sitting this today. He's paralyzed from the waist down. It takes a lot of humility to let somebody carry you. And they grab him, and he's going on what appears to be a death trip. I want you to know that what appears to be death is the way to life, except the seed fall on the ground, get buried in the ground, and die, it can't reproduce. And so they come and they get him, and they carry him. I want you to know that there's some places that God is trying to take you to that you're going to have to let him carry you. There's some things that God's got for you that because you've been dropped, because somebody let you down, because you've been reacting to it, you can't get to it on your own. But God has a plan for getting you there. So, they carry him. This is probably the worst trip of his life. The trip that he went out on was bad. This, this was even worse. And so he gets to the palace. And when he gets to the palace, he's thinking, ka -choo. That's what they did in those days. They collected kings and heirs. And so he gets to the palace, and they sit him in a chair. And when they sit him in a chair, David says to him, listen, don't be afraid. I want you to know God is saying to you today, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to submit to me. Don't be afraid to trust me. My plans, they're not like your plans. My ways, they're not like your ways. My thoughts, they're not like your thoughts. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. So are my waves above your ways. Trust me. Trust me. And so he gets there, and David says, listen, for as long, you don't have to be afraid. For as long as you live, as long as you live, you will sit at my table and eat my food. Amen. As long as you live. Listen, God is in the restoration business. God is always in the restoration business. 
God has always been in the restoration business and God will always be in the restoration business. Don't forget the restoration no matter what process you find yourself in in your life because God already has a greater plan and that plan is to put you at the table. Now, when he sat at the table, we don't have a table up here, but imagine this being a table, and it's got a tablecloth. And when you sit him at the table with all the rest of the kids, with the tablecloth, you can't tell he's lame. I said you can't tell he's lame. Listen, I want you to know that his lameness became his testimony of the greatness from which God can work with. I want you to know that your brokenness is your testimony and God is trying to write a testimony. All you got to do is go with the flow and let him take you where you could never get by yourself. God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose for you. Don't you give up. Don't give in. Don't give up. Fight, 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 fight. Because God's got something better for each one of us than any of us would ever desire for ourselves. God restored him. And not only that, he didn't even have to work the land anymore. Ziba's doing it for him. Bringing in the crops for him. I want you to know that everything that God has offered to us is restoration. It's restoration. But we have to fight through the brokenness, fight through the disappointment, fight through the hurt, fight through the loss, because God has a greater plan. All right. So, Lord, we thank you for the fact that you are a good God, you are a kind God. You are a loving God, you are a purposeful God, and you are a God of plans. For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and to give you a hope. And so, Lord, today we surrender ourselves and trust you. We trust in you, Lord, because we know that no matter what circumstances or situations we find ourselves in, that you have an amazing plan that is much greater than what we're seeing at the moment. So today, Lord, we lean on you. We trust in you. We put all of our faith in you, and we, we surrender ourselves to your amazing will. And all of God's amazing people said... Listen, thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys for watching online. God bless you.